so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville <laughs> welcome to another interesting episode of the crazy week that was with barista neze it was a very proud week for nigerians home and abroad far and wide regardless of tribe ethnicity and religious affiliations it was a proud week for women and even for all africans as a continent so the first on today's episode we are going to be giving credit and honor to whom honor is due on monday the 15th of may 2023 27 year old hilda bassi native of Akwaibom state in nigeria broke a world record of the longest cooking time by an individual as in she is the first human being known on earth to spend up to 100 hours cooking in a stretch 100 whole hours oh my god i'm exhausted just by saying that alone this position was previously held by lata london a chef in india who in september 2019 achieved a record of cooking for 87 hours and 45 minutes at a stretch but this beautiful graduate of sociology from madonna university surpassed her predecessor's record by cooking for 100 hours at a stretch guys that is a whooping 13 whole more hours thus making her the new record holder while she cooked she was cheered encouraged and visited by several well-wishers several celebrities public figures musicians entertainers presenters name it including the governor of Lagos state governor sangwon relu a senator of the federal republic of nigeria senator Akbabio, tiwa savage banky w any IK the presenter, even Kathy who also has a Guinness World Record to her own credit. They all visited her. I mean she even got a tweet from the president, President Mohamedou Buhari. During the course of her action, there were very stringent rules to follow non-compliance of which would lead to her disqualification. One, she must stand to cook. She was not permitted to sit or lie or none of that and even when the food was on the cooker and she had to wait for it to cook she had to wait right on her feet <laughs> about jesus secondly she was not allowed to take coffee or energy drink or any kind of stimulant at all that would boost her energy or body strength <laughs> thirdly she had to cook all day and all night no sleep no rest she only got five minutes break in every one hour which she accumulated and took a 30 minutes break every six hours or a one hour break every 12 hours all day all night she started on friday the 12th and finished on monday the 16th as in cooking back to back non-stop for four whole days and guess what people who got a taste of the meal confirmed that the meals did not lose any form of quality it tasted just as good and delicious as her regular meals so a very big kudos to hilda it felt so good watching a perfect combination of skill strength resilience and endurance it was so satisfying watching that in full display i mean any day i cook two pots of soup <laughs> best believe that i'm going to lie down paralyze <laughs> my whole bones will be broken it will feel from a brick layer that went for a job at a high rising building and i will need like six hours of sleep under the ac but just look at my mates cooking 100 hours non-stop <laughs> without shaking <laughs> so we doff our hats for you hilda thank you so much for putting the country and the continent's name on the map Thank you so much for breaking the Guinness World Record of the longest cooking time by an individual. Guys, drop your comments in the comment section. Drop all your congratulatory messages in the comment section. Which part of this Hilda's journey baffled or startled you the most? Which part were you like, oh my god, girl, I cut cap for you. Are you the cooking type? Do you think you're the type that can go hours cooking without rest? <laughs> well, me, I know that I am not that type. <laughs> Excuse me. God bless you. Let me know in the comment section. Are you that type that can go hours hours and hours cooking like do you enjoy cooking if you are not let me know that's one record that you can break <laughs> i 
are you the type that can break the record of eating and then can break the record of sleeping let me know your specialty let us know what you specialize in in the comment section for me i think i can break the record of the longest shopping shopper in history if you invite me for that competition that is where i'm going to make my own guinness world book of records let me know what yours is down in the comment section well talking about records and breaking records while Hida was breaking a record for the longest cooking time by an individual the only of ife was trying to break the record of the monarch with the highest number of wives ever so we will recall that the only of ife has been married and divorced three times i did a full documentary on him and i'm going to leave the link in the description box so catch up with that story if you're interested so the only of ife has been married three times and has been divorced three times and sometime last year it was as though he thought to himself guy is as if this monogamy thing is not working for me <laughs> no 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 i can't do this no more and the oni of ife went into full-blown polygamy so last year between the months of september and october i mean just a one month period the oni of ife took six wives six wives and guys you may be tempted to think that they are all this local queer queer anyhow kind of women because you would wonder what kind of young enlightened educated and exposed woman will want to be fifth sixth seventh eighth and eleventh wife but no <laughs> you lie because not only were these women young and beautiful they were also very enlightened exposed and achieved in their own rights first he started by marrying Miriam and Nako the seasoned accountant who worked in oil and gas for many years he married her on the 6th of September and on the 7th of September he married Elizabeth Okpeoluwa an IT executive based in Scotland and on the 9th of October the only of Ife married Toby Phillips ex-beauty queen as his third wife and on the 14th of october he married ashley and elefe princess and businesswoman and on the 20th of the same month he married another princess called ronke as his fifth and then on the 24th of that same month of october he tied the knot with his sixth wife princess temitope and a lot of people were quite disappointed in the only of Ife's marriage spree. They believed that as an enlightened, highly exposed traditional monarch, they expected some progressive ideologies from him. Actions to improve the welfare and quality of life of his people. Rather than going around acquiring wives like artifacts. Well, these people's concerns and opinions were entering one ear of the Oni and exiting the other. He must have given them a very big yimu. Because only a few hours ago, the Oni of Ife just announced his wedding with his seventh wife. Her name is Okweoluwa Elizabeth and their pre-wedding pictures have already flooded the internet. And according to invitation cards sent by the palace, the wedding Thanksgiving service and celebration is scheduled to hold on Saturday, May 20th. People of God, you let Dochi no do reach this one. And people are like... <laughs> Only of Ife, <laughs> if you finish this knot, <laughs> which knot we go can tie? Which knot are you leaving for the younger generation to tie? Is it good? In fact, some young guys, let me just categorize them under the ages of single and searching bachelors in Nigeria, SSBN. They tore their shirts in annoyance. In fact, they are very triggered. As I am talking to you now, their chairman has issued an official statement condemning the actions of the Oni. They are worried that if the Oni finishes all the young beautiful spinsters in town, which ones will then be left for them to marry? Guys, they are really upset. So while some people say that they do not blame the Oni, <laughs> after all, men, people, human beings are naturally born with Ojukokuro eyes. Human beings always want more and he can easily justify it with the I am a traditional man, I am a monarch, my tradition, my culture permits it so he can escape. They say that they are more concerned about these women, young, beautiful, educated women who are happy, proud and comfortable to be 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 15th wife in this 21st century like it beats a lot of people's imagination in this 21st century. I don't know the afraid of diseases. Like it takes just one philandering wife to unleash a baggage of STDs, 
HIV AIDS and all of that on the whole palace. Just one erring wife. Are they not afraid for their health? For their life? What about their mental and psychological well-being? Are they not worried about the kinds of life that their children will be exposed to living? The competition, the envy, the tussle for favoritism. People are so worried, like, they cannot understand why these women, young, beautiful, educated, enlightened, exposed women, are choosing to be numbered in their double digits, going to double digits now, as wives. People are asking, are men so scarce right now? Or is it just a longing for fortune and title? Is it greed? Is it material things? What exactly is it? What is motivating and driving these young educated women in their prime to settle for being seventh and eighth wife to a three-time divorcee? Let us know what you think about this in the comment section. Drop your opinions down below. Well, for me, <laughs> I do not know. I don't know I, I, I don't know what is going on i just came to give people the information i just said i should inform you guys that admissions are still ongoing the only of ife is still accepting resumes and if you're a young lady in your prime and you do not mind being eighth ninth tenth or fifteenth wife please apply within so moving on to our third topic in the crazy week that was is a rather sad one and despite the buzz of Hilda's achievement almost overshadowing so many other important information and news that made it out this week it is important that we do not let it just slide like that without paying it any mind one very sad incident that occurred this week was the unfortunate passing of our veteran Nollywood actor our very own Tom Cruise our very own Arnold Schwarzenegger, our Nigerian James Bond, Obina Wafo, popularly known as Saint Obi. Gosh, Uncle Saint sure made watching Nollywood movies back then very fun and exciting. Can you remember him? If you remember Saint Obi, begin to drop in the comment section that you do remember him. If you remember any of his movies that caught your eyes or attention, please drop in the comment section. I'm talking about Saint Obi of Candlelight, State of Emergency, Festival of Fire, Saint Obi's movies were always fun and action packed. Oh, yes. Long before Van Vika and Jim Ike took over the scene, there was St. Obi. News of his passing went public on Saturday, the 13th of May 2023, and he was said to have passed in Jos, northern region of Nigeria, after an illness that was said to have been protracted. St. Obi passed as quite a young man, only in his 50s, and people expected that he will have lived longer. So the question on everybody's lips is, what killed Saint Obi? Although his family has not released any statements pertaining the details of his demise, his colleague and movie producer, Zeke Okafor, have come out to reveal a lot about the personal life of Saint Obi and what could probably have brought him closer to his last days. Zeke Okafor revealed that Saint Obi suffered a great deal as a result of a very bad marriage. A marriage he claimed isolated him from his friends and took him away from his acting career. In an article that Zeke wrote after Saint passed, he revealed that Saint's wife, or can we say ex-wife, was a top executive at a telecommunications company here in Nigeria and that her siblings never supported her marriage to Saint Obi. According to him, they considered Saint some sort of gold digger who had come to financially exploit their sister. This story always goes the other way around. It always goes with the man's people thinking that the woman came to suck the man dry. This one is quite strange to us. Zeke alleged that Saint Obi was constantly getting harassed and assaulted by his wife's siblings. He revealed that Saint had opened up to him. In fact, let me just read briefly what he had to say. According to Zeke, Saint Obi said this and I quote, I do not know why my wife's siblings see me as a gold digger. They confront me, harass me, and fight me in my own house, and my wife did nothing to stop them. I work hard. I earn my money. I have never depended on my wife, he lamented, eyes blurred with tears. You could tell that he was in deep pain. By the next visit, Saint returned with a deep cut from a knife on his left eye. His wife's brothers, he said, scaled the wall fence of their house to attack him. They were captured by hidden CCTV installed for surveillance 
and security, he revealed. He reported them at the police station and subsequently acquired a gun to defend himself. This effectively marked the beginning of the end of his marriage and perhaps sent to be his long walk to a sad end. He moved out of his matrimonial home to a new house to begin the reconstruction of his destiny alone without his wife and was still without his three beautiful children about mid last year however obina took ill but he told no one he simply became scarce he was in and out of hospitals he would sell all of his properties including his cars and we will later learn that he had died so according to this is friend and colleague he is painting a picture as though it was the bad marriage that led to saint obi's death neglect abuse emotional trauma that came from being separated from his children and all of that led him to an illness that eventually claimed his life that is according to what this movie producer zeke okafo has said so yes saint obi had eventually moved to his sister's house in Joss and that was where he breathed his last. This narration by St. Toby's friend and colleague has reopened the conversation of how men also suffer in their marriages and nobody gets to hear of it. How we do not get to hear of the horrible experiences that men face in marriages just because men unlike women are less likely and more unwilling to share details of their private life. A lot of people seize the opportunity to encourage men to continue to speak up, speak up, sorrow sick, don't keep it to yourself, don't be silent and die. They encourage men to speak up on the abuses and neglect and torture that they suffer in the hands of women. <laughs> it's not every time my husband did this, my boyfriend did this, my father did this, my uncle. It is always women talking because women are more vocal and men are more embarrassed to admit that they are being abused both physically or mentally. But on the other side, we have this set of, shall I call them, doubting Thomases who do not believe entirely what this producer had come out to say. They wonder that if he was just being a decent, devoted and dedicated husband and her brother his wife's brothers would just come in and start beating him and inflicting injury on him according to them this is very unlikely to happen they insist that from the trend of how brothers behave towards their sisters saint toby must have done something terrible to his wife to warrant her brothers coming in to injure him especially as said that his wife stood by and did nothing about the assault. They conclude that the account given by this his colleague was both lopsided and partial and that his wife's side of the story should be heard before arriving at any conclusions. Well, whatever it is, our childhood star Saint Obi has gone to be with the Lord and we pray that his soul continues to rest in perfect, perfect peace. Do let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Do you really believe this story of St. Toby's colleague that he was such a victim or do you believe that there's something that must certainly have happened to warrant his wife's siblings fighting him and even scarring his eyes? Let us get your thoughts down in the comment section. So guys, we have finally come to the end of today's episode of the crazy week that was with Barista Neze. So which of these stories do you want to contribute to? Which of them touched you? Which of them tickled you? Which of them scattered your dada? Which of them do you want to talk about? Drop your comments down in the comment section if you're yet to subscribe to my channel well don't forget to subscribe give this video a big thumbs up turn on your notifications bell of course and drop all your reaction down in the comment section stay glued because we have so much more coming your way it's me your girl barista neza and this is nezaville i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye